I'm talking about wild bergamot, uh, bee balm, and this is the Minarda fistulosa. There's also Minarda um, didyma, and that's the same flower, as you can see here, it looks like little fireworks, tubular, there, with, uh, this is the mint family. It has opposite branching um, stems here and leaves, as you can see. And your square stem, and that's your Monarda fistulosa. And like I said, the didyma looks just like this, but is the bright red. And you can find uh, one of those two species almost anywhere in North America. They grow, as you can see here, in open prairies and fields and meadows, and along wood edges and trail sides, um, in drier soils, but they can also tolerate clay soils. So for all of those who would like to grow some natives that are great for attracting pollinators, uh, that would be where and how. Um, they work really good if in the spring you want to divide the root systems, then you could propagate them that way. Um, they don't do as well with cuttings, but you can try. These grow on our property in Tennessee, and now I'm in Minnesota, and they're everywhere here. It's one of the most abundant flowers that I've found in this area. So I'm right on the border with uh, Wisconsin, so Minnesota-Wisconsin border here on the St. Croix River. And like I said, they're just all over the place. So the native peoples of this area have used this plant for a long time, over a thousand years. It has a long uh, history of medicinal use. And then when the Europeans came over, um, they, they liked their tea. You know, they had their tradition of having tea. Well, the Boston Tea Party happened. They threw all their tea overboard and they said, no, now what are we going to do? So they actually turned to this plant, um, and that is what they drink. So it has very pungent, minty, oregano, thyme flavor. So it's sweet, but it's also very pungent. So it's great for things like gastric disorders, like you would find with the mint. Um, gas, bloating, cramping, any digestive discomfort. But it's also really good for things when you have a low-grade fever. It will help induce uh, a gentle sweat. You know, it's not like yarrow where it really, you know, it causes you to sweat a lot. But um, it's a gentle stimulant. It's also good for things like kidney disorders, um, kidney infections, gallbladder, um, congestion, things like that. So it, it will stimulate those systems. It will stimulate the release of bile, um, which will help the gallbladder function and the digestive system run more smoothly. Uh, it makes a great tea, like I mentioned, but you can also tincture the plant. So you would get, um, this variety grows about three feet tall, and the Monarda didyma grows about two feet tall, it's shorter. But this one, you would want to probably use the top foot of the plant. The stem, the leaf, and the flower all contain medicinal constituents um, that you can use that are useful to you. And the stem actually has more things in it that are good for the nerve system. So very calming, um, but not sedative. You know, it's good for things like if you had high blood, high blood pressure due to nervousness or anxiety, this would be helpful just the way that... Um, lemon balm is, Melissa officinalis. So, um, let's see, also in a bath, uh, it would be very relaxing. Not only the vapor would help loosen congestion from a cold or a cough or a flu when you're just not feeling well and you're kind of clammy and crampy and just overall feeling weak, um, it would be really good to take a bath with this infused into it. Uh, but also for muscle spasms, again on the nervous system, muscle spasms, tight muscles, sore muscles, wounds, um, and sunburn. So externally good for those things, and then internally good as an infusion or a tincture. An infusion is just a tea. So you would dry this, um, use about an ounce to, I'd say a quart. You know, I use an ounce or probably half a gallon, and it mixes well with other things as well. So makes a good... Uh, 
tea before bedtime to relax and soothe the stomach or the nerves. So that's just a few of the uses. Um, there's a book that I wanted to show you guys that I recommend. It's by Matthew Wood, who is actually from this area. He's lived in Wisconsin, um, or Minnesota, several areas that I've been here. Maple Plains, I was there for a couple of weeks. And now we are in the St. Croix um, Cottage Grove area. But Matthew Wood, so he's he's got a lot of excellent information on this plant that goes more into depth, and as well as many other plants that you would find in this area, and all the way, you know, stretching from Colorado. We were there, um, and I found several of the plants there that he mentions, and all the way to Tennessee, and I know on the East Coast, several of these things grow as well. So, um, yeah, be looking out for this one, Minarda fistulosa, or Minarda um, didyma.